You may or may not have grown up with giving thanks for food before meals using a scripted prayer. Perhaps you continue this spiritual practice. When I was a child, my siblings and I dutifully folded our hands before each meal, except before breakfast on busy school days, and said, Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. No matter the state of the world that day or the look of the food on our plates, Sometimes I did not want to thank anyone, least of all God, who was supposed to be on my side for the detested soup in my bowl, or the kid on the playground who bullied me. In speaking those words anyway, did I learn hypocrisy instead of gratitude? What does it mean to rejoice always, or to make a joyful noise to God, like it says in Psalm 100? And in doing so, is there a chance that gratitude for blessings might simply inure us to the injustice that loads abundance on some plates and empties others? In other words, how do we authentically make joyful noise of gratitude in the full knowledge of our human failings? For an example, let's look at Miriam, who for the second time possibly witnesses Moses' salvation from water. She may have watched when, as an infant, Moses was taken up from the river by Pharaoh's daughter. Now Miriam sings, dances, and plays a tambourine in gratitude after she, Aaron, and Moses, along with all the Israelites, have emerged untouched by the Red Sea while it closed over Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. As the enemy drowns, Moses and the Israelites sing their gratitude to God, source of strength and salvation. But Miriam goes further. When she and the women pick up tambourines and dance, they embody the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor in a language that amplifies the words of Moses' song, the language of body movement, punctuated by the drumbeat and the clash of symbols visibly and physically enacts the freedom they have gained because God has triumphed. In this act, and because in her whole body she understands whom to thank, Miriam is called prophet. A prophet has the special status of truth-teller, or one who urges the people to obey God. Moses, of course, is the significant prophet in the Hebrew Bible. But Miriam's action here, her joyful noise, brings to the people a reinforcement of their indebtedness to God. She frames Moses' song by making a refrain of his first line. Sing to the Lord, for God has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider God has thrown into the sea. In her dance and celebration, she reiterates the wisdom of Psalm 100. Know that God has made us and not we ourselves. Know that we are God's people and this is God's saving act. Therefore, says Paul in the first letter to the Thessalonians, give thanks in all circumstances. Note, Paul does not limit those circumstances to the good things of life, such as liberation from oppression, full bellies, or a good harvest. If we are to give thanks in all circumstances, if that is what constitutes true rejoicing and rest in Christ, then we cannot insulate ourselves from our flaws and disappointments, even when we dance and sing for joy as did Miriam with the women. But how is this possible? Am I to be grateful when things are not going my way? You want me to take up my tambourine when my plate is empty, when my life has handed me the pits instead of the cherries? Am I to turn in gratitude to God when I know that my unearned privilege has been handed to me because others have less or none? To give thanks for good and bad is like patting my head and rubbing my stomach at the same time, 
You can try this right now. Pat your head and rub your stomach at the same time. Can it be done without confusing or blending the two? It may be worth remembering that the command to rejoice always does not limit believers to a mood of meaningless happiness. Miriam's joy is not like that of, say, Grey Cup winners who crow, we're number one. Her rejoicing is in God. Loosely translated, she could be saying something like, God is number one. I believe that God wants us to rejoice in all that God gives, not because God needs our praise or wants us to be endlessly happy, clappy, but precisely because in the act of giving thanks and rejoicing in God, we come together into relationship with God. We begin to know with Miriam that God triumphs gloriously, not we ourselves, and that though generations pass, God's love endures forever. As we explore the theme of gratitude over the next four Sundays, we will be challenged to bring our whole selves, body and mind, to thanksgiving. Dancing and playing tambourines, Miriam and the other Israelite women lead us in a kind of spiritual aerobics, a full-body experience of gratitude. As we move into the week ahead, let's emulate Miriam and the Israelite women by mentally beating the tambourine and dancing each time we remember to thank God for God's faithfulness. Amen.